Sup, Shooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, unsurprisingly, I get a lot of questions about finesse right on this channel. About 99.99% .99 of those questions are about shedding. And since I brought that up, I'll go ahead and link my video about shedding below. But every now and then, I get a more interesting question about the drug. Such as this one question from this gentleman right here, who told me that finesse right caused him to develop an extremely rare, but still very serious condition called post finasteride mantis syndrome. As the name would imply, this is a condition that literally transformed him into a praying mantis. This is especially concerning because a praying mantis only has a one year lifespan. So if the PFS network is watching this video, please dedicate all of your research towards helping this man reverse his post finasteride mantis syndrome as he only has until March of 2024 before he dies of old age. Another question that comes up a bit more frequently in my videos is whether or not finasteride affects your eyes. To be more specific, people have told me that they're worried that finasteride will give them dry eyes or other vision problems. So, my job at Hair Cafe Winter School of the Wolf is to break through the fear mongering and get right down to the scientific research so people don't have to speculate and they can make judgments based on real data rather than what some bunch of morons say online. So let's get to the bottom of this query. Does finasteride cause dry eyes? If it does, how common and serious is it and can anything be done about it? Well, first of all, there is a very real medical condition called dry eye syndrome or dry eye disease. People who have it complain of having irritation and a gritty feeling in their eyes. It's actually a pretty common condition. In this study right here of over 25,000 men aged 50 or more, the incidence of dry eyes was about 4% in men 50 to 54 years old and was 8% in men over 80 years old. If you look at other sources, the incidence ranges from 5% to 34% of the population or even higher. There are many causes of this disease, including contact lenses or could occur after LASIK eye surgery and it can also be caused by certain medicines like antihistamines or antidepressants, or it can just occur spontaneously for unknown reasons. So we are talking about a very, very common condition here, Chooms, and we know that finasteride is one of the most commonly used drugs in the entire world, so of course it is inevitable that some people with dry eyes will just so happen to also be on finasteride, and this of course is just correlation and doesn't prove any causation, but you know what's going to happen next. People are inevitably going to assume that finasteride causes dry eye syndrome, just as some people assume finasteride turned them into praying mantises, and this will be yet another excuse to fearmonger about the use of finasteride. So, I looked into who is to blame for all this hysteria, and I found the culprit. It is Dr. Trash. Yes, the very same Dr. Trash I talked about in my Dark Side of Finasteride video, which is linked below. This is a guy who seems to be on the payroll of the PFS network, and is very notorious for deliberately interpreting research in a way that is designed to make finasteride look bad. The study Dr. Trash is responsible for that gets shared by most finasteride-hating trolls online is this one published back in 2020, titled, quote, Health risk associated with long-term finasteride and nutasteride use. It's time to sound the alarm. Unquote. In the article, Dr. Trash has a whole section on finasteride and dutasteride supposedly impairing eye function and causing dry eye disease. Like almost all the fear mongering in this infamous article, Dr. Trash does not cite any research that actually shows any proof that finasteride or dutasteride causes dry eye disease. In fact, the only human data he comes up with is that women with a syndrome called androgen insufficiency tend to have dry eyes. Androgen insufficiency is a syndrome in women where they totally lack androgen receptors. So, of course, being totally resistant to androgens is not the same thing as just reducing one particular trash androgen like DHT with a 5AR blocker. But Dr. Trash makes a giant leap in logic here. He goes from data that a total lack of androgens causes dry eyes to claiming that just suppressing DHT with finasteride causes dry eyes, which doesn't follow at all. But this is typical of Dr. Trash's reasoning. The other data he comes up with is a rodent study where rats are given much higher doses of finasteride than normal human doses. And this leads to dry eyes in these rodents. Like I've discussed in other videos many times though, finasteride doesn't have the same effect in rodents as it does in human beings. In rodents, finasteride is a powerful blocker of the type 2 and type 1 5AR isoenzymes, while in human beings, it is a powerful type 2 blocker, but a very, very weak blocker of the type 1 5AR isoenzyme. So mouse and rat studies of finasteride are not great predictors of how finasteride works in humans. But before we go further, it looks like androgens may 
really have something to do with dry ice, but what exactly is the connection here that we're looking for? Well, you might think it would have something to do with the formation of tears, but it's actually something a little different than that. It turns out that in your eyelids, there are glands called meibomian glands. These glands don't secrete tears. Instead, they are a type of sebaceous gland, but they don't secrete that oily stuff called sebum that lubricates your skin either. Instead, they secrete a special substance called mebum. Mebum is an oil that floats on your tears, which are mostly water, and this oil helps prevent the tears from evaporating too soon. It also helps form a seal when you close your eyes and helps just lubricate the eyes because of that. So if you have clogged meibomian glands or they aren't working right for whatever reason, you will end up with dry eyes. The link with androgens is that androgens are important for proper function of these meibomian glands. In fact, like we mentioned, people with androgen deficiency or androgen resistance are more likely to have poor meibomian gland function and dry eyes. However, even though there are type 1 and type 2 5-air isoenzymes in these glands, there is no evidence at all that it is DHT that is important for the function of these glands. In fact, even the very mild androgen called DHEA can treat meibomian gland dysfunction, at least in rats. But there's also human data that shows that topical testosterone can help with this particular syndrome. So... There is no specific androgen that is necessary for these glands in order for them to operate properly. Finasteride lowers DHT, but can also increase testosterone levels by as high as 15%. So what effect does finasteride have on these glands? Well, last year a study was presented that claimed that finasteride worsened MGD, which is meibomian gland dysfunction, and caused dry eyes. This study was presented as an abstract at a medical meeting. So, in the study, the investigators reported on all cases of patients with dry eyes who showed up at their clinic between the years 2005 and 2011 who were also taking finasteride. This turned out to be 116 patients with dry eye syndrome who were taking finasteride. These men were not your typical hair loss users of finasteride like you or me. Instead, these were older people with an average age of 68 years, and 95% of them were men. The vast majority of them were on 5 milligrams per day of finasteride, so most of them were taking it for benign prostatic hyperplasia and not for hair loss, since the standard dose for hair loss is just 1 milligram. Anyways, these men all had dry eyes, and they were followed for an average of 55 months, which is between 4 and 5 years. What the investigators did was compare how many subjects had evidence of meibomian gland disease when they first evaluated versus when they were last seen in the follow-up in the clinic. Well, the percentage of subjects with meibomian gland disease, or MGD, initially was 63%, and after the average of four to five years of follow-ups, the percentage increased to 85%. There was also an increase in other abnormalities associated with dry eye disease over time. The study concludes, quote, the androgen-sensitive meibomian glands may be altered in those taking anti-androgen medications, and especially finasteride given its unique potency and targeted effects compared to other anti-androgenics, unquote. So, what does this study tell us? Honestly, not a whole lot. It doesn't tell us what percentage of people who take finasteride get dry eyes. The patients in the study were all seen at a dry eye clinic, so naturally all of them have dry eyes, and some of them also were on finasteride. But like I said at the beginning of this video, dry eyes is an extremely common condition, and just because people develop it while they're on finasteride doesn't prove any causation. This tells us nothing about whether finasteride can cause dry eyes, because finasteride is one of the most commonly used and prescribed drugs in the entire world especially since both in large prostate and hair loss are such extremely common issues. So, some people who have dry eyes from other factors are bound to also be on finasteride just by happenstance. That's especially true because these were older patients we're talking about here, Chooms, and age is one of the risk factors for getting dry eyes. But it gets even better than that because guess what another risk factor is for having dry eyes? That's right, it's BPH, meaning benign prostatic hyperplasia. So, as the men of the study who were on finasteride to treat BPH got older, it's no wonder that they had a worsening of their dry eye syndrome. There's no reason to think that finasteride had anything to do with it, and frankly, this is a huge problem when it comes to reporting side effects. Just because something happens after taking finasteride doesn't mean finasteride is responsible. This is what's called a post hoc propter hoc fallacy. This is a problem with a lot of supposed finasteride side effects. Let's take depression, for instance. Depression is a common disease, and finasteride is a commonly used drug. 
So naturally, there are people with depression who are also on finasteride, but that doesn't prove any kind of causation. To prove a drug has a side effect, you have to do what's called a controlled randomized study where half the subjects are on the drug and the other half are on a placebo. If more people on the drug have depression than the people on the placebo treatment, you can conclude then that depression is caused by the drug. This has actually never been shown with finasteride though, and Merck only added depression as a possible side effect to the package insert back in 2011 in order to avoid lawsuits due to anecdotal claims of finasteride causing depression. It's all complete bullshit though, and I'll link a few videos below explaining why. Getting back to the whole dry eye syndrome though, we have no evidence from any controlled studies that it is more likely to occur than in anyone else not on finasteride. It is a very common condition, and the research data doesn't show a causal link between finasteride and dry eyes. But maybe we just don't have enough data yet. So is it possible that finasteride can cause dry eyes through a mechanism we don't understand? Well, I can't rule out the possibility of it completely, but if it does happen, it is probably very rare, and most of the time the condition is probably due to other causes, and that is especially true since we see this alleged dry eye and finasteride correlation with older men who could easily have dry eyes from factors associated with aging, like BPH, which as we already confirmed, is a contributor to dry eyes. Regardless of whether or not finasteride is a contributor though, we fortunately have many interventions for treating dry eyes. So even if you are convinced that finasteride is causing your dry eyes, there should be no need to stop finasteride and lose your hair just because you have dry eyes. That would be preposterous. In fact, there is even evidence that suggests that finasteride has benefits for the eyes. This isn't just speculation either, because finasteride has been found to be effective for an eye condition called central serous chorioretinopathy. Now, this is a pretty rare disease, but it can cause loss of visual acuity. Finasteride actually improved the condition and improved visual acuity, as you can see in this figure from a study that I'll link below. So this is potentially yet another one of the many off-label benefits of finasteride, in addition to the many other benefits it causes for your cardiovascular system and nervous system, which I all talk about in my DHT is a trash hormone series. So, of course, none of this is anything that would make into an article by someone like Dr. Trash, because he's hoping finasteride will become the next Vioxx. Though, honestly, if they took finasteride off the market, I don't know what he would have to write about anymore, since he seems to have made his whole career by bashing finasteride. So, this is yet another example of someone claiming finasteride causes a problem, when the reality is, is that the opposite is much more likely to be true, and that there are benefits of finasteride in certain eye conditions. This is similar to what I found in researching the role of finasteride in mental health conditions and in cardiovascular conditions, in that despite claims that these conditions worsen with finasteride, there actually is evidence of benefit from using finasteride, and if you're interested in learning more about those particular subjects, I'll go ahead and link those videos below. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up, but not to worry, there is plenty of more bullshit about finasteride and DHT to scientifically dismantle, so I'll be back with more content very soon. So, thank you for watching, my fellow hair loss witchers. God bless.